Welcome to Second Take, the show that focuses on the issues behind the news. The South African government is intent on creating incentives for mines to derive greater benefits from investing in platinum fuel cell technology. Mining Weekly editor Martin Kremer tells us more. Hi Martin. Hi Sushni. Impala Platinum recently launched a fuel cell forklift and hydrogen refueling station at its platinum and base metals refinery in Springs. Can you tell us about the launch and the aim of this investment? Well, at last they're putting their money where their mouth is. You know, we've been talking about uh, fuel cells using platinum for decades now. And it's always been, oh, in the next five years and then the following five years. But now, suddenly, it's happening. And it's not only happening in South Africa, it's happening in the world. You know, the Japanese are dead keen on a hydrogen economy. They've already got a roadmap that will take them to being a hydrogen economy by 2040. And when we say hydrogen economy, where do the fuel cells fit in? Well, the fuel cells need a fuel. And one of the most abundant uh, sources of that on Earth is hydrogen, and it's clean. So we saw that in action out at Springs at the Impala refinery. It's a nice big complex. You know, they produce platinum, refined platinum there, and base metals, because they also do nickel. And they're using those very metals to store the hydrogen, first of all, which is quite tricky and then to use that hydrogen as a drivetrain. You might say, well, a forklift, there are not huge numbers of forklifts in the world, we'd rather be in a car. Already, you know, fuel cells are driving cars in the world. We saw it driving a couple of forklifts out at Springs because they've already got the hydrogen coming in from uh, Sassel. Uh, they've got the natural gas as well coming through, so they have shown us this hydrogen refueling station plus the the uh, forklifts in action saying look uh, they're not quite competitive yet but you know once they get deeper into it it should be and then they could probably also take them underground and use the fuel cells for underground mining equipment probably not hydrogen in that case but other gases uh, <coughs> and then they are ambitious about using their electricity and a fuel cell is something that produces electricity cleanly and quietly cleanliness is being demanded by the world at the moment so you get away from the greenhouse gas a lot of the drivers of the um, forklift trucks were very happy because there were no diesel fumes and so they didn't have to wear any respiratory equipment and they're saying, you know, it's fantastic going around using this because you go for quite long periods of time without having to refuel. When you do, you just do it in seven minutes. You know, whether, like in the past, if they used a battery and not a diesel, it used to take them much longer than that to recharge. So from that point of view, it's got a big advantage over the um, battery-driven um, fuel um, forklift. We see that... The fuel cell, though, is also battling against lithium and graphite, which is um, being used for uh, lithium batteries for electric cars. The problem with the electric cars that you see going around in the world at the moment is that they take a long time to recharge, whereas the recharging with a fuel cell is quick and the range is like a normal car. So hopefully this new age will come. It's called the hydrogen age, and people are working on a hydrogen economy the Minister of Science and Technology, Naledi Panda, was particularly enthusiastic about this. She was jumping on the forklifts and <laughs> having a great time because she's been working on this for a couple of, well, I think I would say a decade. And she's been in the background sort of working on what they call Hydrogen South Africa. And they have a 15-year program, and they're well into that at the moment. So these are all the demonstration plants that are going up related to that. And South Africa, because they've got such a supply of platinum, they're saying, why should Japan be ahead of us? Why should Japan, which has got no platinum, you know, only wanting to buy interest in platinum mines in South Africa, and why should they be so keen and not us when this could not just be a fuel cell, which is a product, it's a whole economy that develops. It creates a window of opportunity for mass job creation. And... I think they should do a lot more with it. They're a little bit quiet, but you see, you know, the Department of Trade and Industry, you know, every now and again, like um, in Cape Town in February, they said, we're backing this company, which is going to fast track the fuel cells. We see the Minister of Science and Technology saying, I'm going to speak to the Department of Mineral Resources because we want to make it uh, 
incentivized for mines to see benefit in using fuel cells on mines. So a little, you know, if it's all over the place, but what the minister is really looking for, she's looking for a, a special economic zone to be declared where they can manufacture fuel cell parts. And some people say it could be in Rustenburg close. Other people say it's likely to be uh, at the Johannesburg International Airport, where I was told there's already preparation. And then they want nec uh, one next door at uh, this particular plant, the refinery, so that whatever can be done close, they can give them hydrogen and whatever they need across the road or across the fence. And what are the benefits of using fuel cells in the mining sector? Yeah, look, the, the big benefit is, you know, underground, it would be great to have something that doesn't have fumes. You know, you don't want fumes under there. There is a concern with the hydrogen. People f throw their mines back to the Hindenburg, which was um, a huge disaster. It was a ze Zeppelin that exploded because of the hydrogen when it, uh, uh, you know, finished its destination. So. That storage is going to be very important, but you can use other fuels besides that. And the important thinking is that platinum mines will drive their vehicles on platinum. Uh, platinum mines will produce the electricity with the help of platinum. So that's the idea. They want to drive that demand for platinum because Southern Africa has got more platinum than any other place on Earth. And that includes Zimbabwe, of course you know, where we've got more than 80% of the world's with Zimbabwe. It is a wonder metal. And these fuel cells, you know, they were developed in 1838 and patented, I think, in 1839. They've been around for a long time. And their only byproduct is water. So what the minister is saying is because the world is so environmentally conscious, fighting climate change, they're going to go for something that is absolutely clean. And also, its only byproduct is water which we also need. So against that background, it looks very promising. She wants our roadmap to be developed soon so that we know where we're going with hydrogen and with platinum fuel cells. Government is hoping to create incentives for mines to benefit from platinum fuel cell investment. What is the ultimate vision in this regard? Well, they want to create an economy. You know, they're not that interested in talking product or they want a whole economy where there's a service element. There, there are so many aspects to component manufacture that we might be able to make certain components here, get into a niche, export those around the world. They see a window of opportunity. And why they want to incentivize people so that you, you see more and more activity around this and a big picture develops. But I think that we need to move a bit faster because you know the, the rest of the world is not standing still on this. But the window, I think, is still wide open for us to climb through. Science and Technology Minister Naledi Pando said at the launch that government was looking to, to develop a fuel cell and hydrogen roadmap. Can you tell us about this? Yes, and you know that's what um, she's saying all the time. Let's get a clear picture. And so she's trying to rope in Treasury because she wants incentives. She's trying to rope in uh, the Department of Mineral Resources because she knows that the mines are dead keen. If you're producing the platinum, if you're producing the platinum, you, you want to drive that demand. So you will step in there. And if you can get a few incentives to do it, you're going to step in even faster. So she, that's, that's her idea. Get the government involved. She likes this idea of the government the, with a public-private partnership. She can see it move fast. She's seen, you know, when public-private partnerships have been developed around the whole idea of um, renewable energy, sun energy, wind energy. She's seen how fast this goes. So she's very keen on stimulating the Treasury to firm up on its <coughs> uh, particular incentivization programs that can be used. She also points to the mines and says, you know, in terms of the mining charter, you've got a value add this 3%. So come on, fit that into what you're going to do. She herself is, lo she wants to dish out these tax incentives. She even said to Impala Platinum there, you know, I haven't received your application yet, so let's get it in because she wants to have a large n uh, spreadsheet of people active in this. And then the one department she's really waiting for big time is the Department of Trade and Industry, which behind the scenes is working like a little beaver around this. But you know, economics at the moment are tough in the world, not just South Africa. And the politics in South Africa at the moment are tough. So as she said, you know, <coughs> there's been tweets around that I'm going to lose my jobs. <laughs> you know, that's the sort of thing that happens uh, at the moment. There are changes 
Uh, and every time they change a minister, it, it actually you lose a lot. And you find that um, private sector companies, they keep going, whereas governments change and politicians change. So that's why if you can involve that uh, private sector and get that momentum going, that's when, when you achieve quite a lot. And she's already, you know, she went to Japan, she chatted to them, she's got them coming out here because she wants to combine our sun power with manufacture of hydrogen. You see, the, the actual production of hydrogen is important. What energy are you going to use? You know, a lot of people say, gee, well, you know, you're going to use more energy to produce the hydrogen than the hydrogen gives you energy. So she says, no, 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 look to the sun. You know, let's bring the Japanese in here, get that sun power involved to produce the hydrogen, and then have hydrogen distribution points based on the solar. And then we've got this fuel cell that can drive cars, that can drive golf carts. I mean, she's, she moaned at this airport where she said they should have golf carts <laughs> with, with uh, hydrogen-powered fuel cells in them because they took so long to recharge the batteries. <laughs> she didn't have a, a means of transport to get to a far-flung part of the airport. So she was obviously trying to promote and uh, she was um, trying to promote the whole fuel cell thing. So, But th there, there is thinking along this because it can go into clinics, it can go into schools. If you're far flung out of the grid, you can produce your electricity from the fuel cell. They're doing it already. You know, in the free state we see it and we see these schools and clinics that have got it. Uh, so it's mobile and it's stationary. And we see these these towers, the cell phone towers now. You know, they are, are being energized by fuel cells because the diesel is dirty and you know, you've got cars around and people don't want that. So already I think there are quite a large number of them that get powered by fuel cells. So it's slipping in everywhere. It can slip into your laptop. It can slip into your cell phone itself. And instead of having to recharge your cell phone so many times, you won't have to do it for you know, weeks on end probably if you've got your fuel cell. So it's something that the world is looking at. We need to look at hard because we want them to use that platinum. They, of course, in the world say, you know, try and thrift the platinum. There's still too much platinum being used because the platinum is quite expensive. And you've got this movement going around. The Germans also making sure that that hydrogen that you get no longer, it can be treated like an, a normal oil fuel. So, you know, these petrol stations down here, they're used to getting a tanker coming in, not with gas, but with, with liquid fuel. The Germans are able to turn that hydrogen into a liquid. So it just can be moved around in the same way as, as you do oil. So everybody's putting in their tuppence halfpenny worth, and hopefully it comes together in a big way. Thanks for chatting with us, Martin. It's a great pleasure, Sashni. That's it for today. Join us again next week for more news analysis on South Africa's mining industry.